what's up guys this is Alex from X Trades back to you with another top five trading ideas video and also a little analysis into the indexes going into next week so our first setup here we're looking at DAL um, you got a pretty clear downtrend you got test number one test number two coming up for test three you have a daily 50 EMA right here um, we'd be looking at puts on this um, or you could go short stock whatever works for you Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a trend line in case it wants to break out. You can look at calls to the upside. And for price targets, you're looking at about, let's see, you're looking at about 28 area or so. So if this holds true and it does reject this third test, you're looking for a move back down to here and I'll probably try to hold up about right there. And last week you saw that we had a pretty mixed bag for setups, right? We had some puts and we had some calls. Um, mostly puts, but really good watch list last week. We had MOS uh, for calls, broke out to the upside. Um, on Monday, it totally just ripped. Uh, hopefully, people took profit around there because um, the next day and then, you know, the, the week, you know, following or the days following, it, it did sell off pretty hard. So, give you about a 4% day and a good area to take profit. Um, and there's a lot of other good setups. So, I recommend you go to, you know, our first video for last week's setups. Um, you might find some educational value in that and, um, you know, it, it could help you make decisions for next time. So we'll go ahead and get into number two. We're looking at DL puts, uh, set an alert, looking for calls to the upside if it wants to break. Um, but the main focus is puts or um, if you want to go short stock, you can do that. And maybe a move down to 28. Um, if you want to just turn this into a day trade, you could do that too. You know, you know sell by end of the day. And... Um, Usually with the one day setups like this, they're, they're pretty versatile for both. Um, they're versatile for both, you know, swing trades and day trades. So um, you could look for a quick move or you can buy time on your contracts and give it some room so you can try to get your price target back down to support. Um, the only thing concerning about this is the MACD crossing to the upside. So keep a watch on that. Now we'll get into BA, ticker symbol Boeing. It has a pretty similar setup. Um, from what I remember here. Let it load up. All right, so we got a downtrend line. We got test one, test two, test number three, um, just like DAL. Um, you'd be looking at puts on this more than likely, uh, you know, just like the last one. We're gonna go ahead, right click the line, add alert at trend line. And um, if it does wanna break to the upside, we'll have a setup for calls. Um, and, you know, if it did break back upside, that'd be your stop loss too. Same with DAL. If it uh, invalidated your downtrend line, you go ahead and stop out on the break to the upside. And um, if it did break upside, it more likely run to this 50 EMA, um, which is right here, or it run up to supply right here. For price targets to the downside, which is our focus, we're looking at about 121. Um, there's a daily level right, daily level right there. Um, it does have a little small demand zone, a little drop base rally demand. Probably run back down to there. And um, I'll go ahead and draw it for you real quick. So the test number three, looking for a move about down there. Probably try to curl up right about there. Um, and you saw, you know, some of the setups did do, do, did do that last week. So um, we'll go ahead and get into PDD next. This is a Chinese name. Now another trend line play as well, except this is an uptrend line play. Um, since it breaks down here, and you do have a close, slight close under it, you'd be looking at puts on this as well. Um, there is a chance it could hold up. It would require, you know, the Hang Seng, Hang Seng Index, which is the, you know, Chinese version of their own index. You, if that looks to hold up, you know, you might see PDD make a base here and rally back up to the upside. But um, with this trend line break, you'd be looking for a move back down to this support about 45 bucks, probably try to curl up about there. Um, that's a pretty far price target. You know, if you're just doing a day trade, you know, it'd be good, you know, maybe to sell it like $50, something like that with a tight stop. Um, if it does decide to hold up, and you know, this, this setup for the downside could be invalid. So make sure you're, you know, waiting for confirmation. Maybe look for an open below the trend line. Um, if it does open below, there's a good chance, like let's say it gap down, right? Come back up, it might try to back test something like that, then go to the downside. 
Um, I recommend going to watch my trend lines, triangles, and wedges video if you haven't already. If you're not too sure about trend lines yet, um, you'll see a lot of the stuff that we cover. They usually do like a back test. So either a breakout to the upside, it'll come back down back test before ripping, or a break to the downside, it'll come back up back test and then go to the downside. So, and y'all know I really like trend lines because they're versatile. Um, and you know, you can trade multiple setups. So you can look for something to the upside if it holds, or look something to the downside if it goes down. You know, keep your options open. So we'll go ahead and get into PayPal next. Um, these next two are actually call setups. So I wanted to keep it versatile in case we need to switch. You all know, I, I'm really trying to lean a little more bullish because, you know, coming into November and knowing that Wall Street has that pressure to perform good for Q4, you know, it could give us a rip to the upside. And um, maybe even a little bear market rally, something like that. You, you know, we saw it last week. Right after the CPI number came out, the, everything just went, you know, crazy. Just totally insane. Just insane rally from being down, you know, 1.8% to up almost 3 you, you just don't see that. So, kind of got to keep your options open in this crazy volatility. So, PayPal here, we got a pretty clear down channel, right? But we also have a very nice demand zone right here. So we got one day demand. Um, this would be a counter trend play. So you'd be looking for it to hold up the channel, hold up the man, and you know curl back up towards you know the upper channel line, just like how you see here. So this is a counter trend play um, for price targets. You're looking at let's see about eighty four dollars for this previous support at eighty four thirteen. It probably hit something like that. So you know probably reject there. Um, maybe even run up to the, you know, the 50 EMA, which is going to change, you know, as price moves. So you have to see what the 50 EMA is over days. But, um, this demand is pretty nice. It's a, um, rally based rally zone. So I'll draw it out for you real quick. Got a rally, creates a base, then rallies to the upside. And once price returns, gives you a good setup. You can already see that you got a strong wick reaction right here. Comes back and on, you know, this day it just totally rips from demand um, coming back down there's a good chance it can hold only thing that's a little bit wary about this setup is that the MACD um, is showing negative momentum and is crossed to the downside so this is kind of a contrarian play um, it's counter trend for sure um, your stop loss would have to be below demand zone low if you're doing a swing trade um, cause that's kind of wide if you did a day trade you wouldn't want to set it all the way at $76 um, if you're doing a day trade, it might have to be, you know, below this little low right here. What is that, like 79, 79.35 for a stop loss, so kind of tight for a day trade. But um, price target-wise, I mean, this 84 range is not too far away. Um, but you can probably tighten up your price target as well. I'm just showing you the daily levels, right? Um, you want to go off nice little pivots. Something that you see price has clearly reacted to. Something that shows a clear imbalance that, you know, when it hit this area, something changed, right? So you can see once it bounced back up here, it came back up to 84.13, rejected right off of it. So clear area of resistance as previous support. Next, AMD, our second call. So I'm going to go over this again. DAL, we're looking at puts. Um, we set a trend line at the uh, trend line alert. In case it wants to break upside for calls, BA, literally the same thing. Third test, downtrend line, looking for puts. Set an alert. Um, if it wants to break upside, we'll look at calls. PDD, another trend line play. Um, broke that trend line briefly, looking for more downside. Um, and you also want to be cautious if it holds up um, the trend line because it is kind of close. PayPal, we're looking at strictly calls. Um, and your stop loss would have to be, you know, maximum below that demand zone low if you're doing a swing trade amd another down channel play it's another counter trend you can see on the weekly you got a clear down channel finally testing the bottom after just brutal selling um you got a pretty high spike in volume here um one could argue maybe that you know once it gets down here it shows volume is peaking a little bit so um, could be buyers finally showing up, um, or it could just be strong sellers. But you have to realize the market's made up of buyers and sellers. So every, for every seller, there's a buyer. Every buyer, there's a seller. So 
Um, it just a, you'll never know the sentiment of where they got in. Um, you'll, you'll just never know unless you know you're looking at SEC filings for institutional traders and stuff like that. So um, you don't know if they're selling at a loss, if they're adding to a position, etc. So I take volume with a grain of salt, but it does show you know overall activity pretty well. So but you can see a clear down channel. Um, they do have earnings coming up, so this would probably have to be a quick trade. Um, you'd want to sell out before this because it's just a straight gamble. So let's see. Add the brush for a counter trend channel. Same thing as PayPal. You'd just be looking for it to curl back up, head back, you know, to this media line. Um, maybe even the 50 EMA. I'll zoom in a little bit for price targets. We'll zoom in. You're looking at this daily level about 60.14. Um, another previous support about 62.83, and then you'd need a stop loss um, maximum below this low. If it did break the low, it could get ugly short term. So, um, or if it went outside the channel, it's clear that you know this, this channel might not be valid anymore. So, you don't want to watch that. But um, it looks like it could be a nice counter trend trade. Um, you got one test, two, three. This would be the fourth. It did attempt to do it. Um, it just couldn't make it um, after the selling at the day after the CPI report. But really nice channel. You can see, you know, all the other times it did give nice counter trend stuff. So, you know, just going off the pattern and, you know, stocks repeating history, there's a good chance, you know, you could see it curl up here. We actually did have a, a setup similar to this on Nevada. Um, I think it was maybe two weeks ago. Uh, it gave a really nice day trade. Um, just quick day trades off the bottom channel and uh yeah good opportunity to go counter trend you know maybe be a contrarian trader there next we're gonna go into the indexes so last week what did we say last week okay so last week i said we um we're okay we were at demand that's what it was let's see we'll add this demand so this is the same demand we covered so we were looking for it to hold up here um, we said if it did break low, it could get ugly. It did on the CPI, but it instantly bounced. So um, I said if it did hold up this area, there's a pretty good chance it could run back up to the trend line, and it did. It um, ran up to the trend line, rejected pretty hard. So, I mean, if you were trading calls to the upside, you'd be a pretty quick on an exit. Um, but you could see it's just still, we're kind of in a choppy area, right? Um, we're going to need to break out of this downtrend line for bulls. Um, bears are going to want to stop seeing stagnation once it hits these lows because that's all we've done. Um, every time we put in a low, it, I mean, it just rips. So definitely starting to exhaust everybody, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, the channel and the downtrend line is pretty clear. So um, still have negative sentiment. You know, the, the Fed is still having trouble clearly um, based on the economic data that maybe they're not fighting inflation that you know as fast as they thought and um, you know that's had a real effect on the dollar um, on the consumer um, especially for confidence and you know with with these kind of things it could take a long time you know for it to start showing up in the market so we just have to you know keep waiting on data um, and unfortunately we're just going to wait for Jerome Powell you know, he's, he's kind of the leader um, in telling us what, you know, basically we should do with our money, especially, you know, the top 1% of rich people, you know, they're, they're being told what to do with their money. And right now it's, I don't think it's by equities, but um, you never know. Markets could stabilize. Um, we're going to want to see it break out of this downtrend line. Like I said, I'll draw a little brush right here. So I want to see it break out, I'd probably head back to supply or this downtrend line and then try to you know, reject right there. It'd probably even help to reclaim this June low. Um, because we just keep chopping back and forth. It seemed like once we got back above it, we found strength. Once we got back below it, you know, strong selling. Um, one good thing about this is that the MACD is crossing to the upside. So, um, as long as the signal stays up, we might be able to see some buying. But, um, it just depends. So your levels, um, pretty much same as last week. Downtrend line, June low. Um, this little 357 area is probably important. And then this new low that we made after the CPI report, um, you're going to want to see that hold. 
So, um, just like I said last week, if that you know if this low gets lost, it would get ugly. It did very briefly. Um, same with this 348. If we lose this, uh, it can get ugly short term again. So, we're gonna want to see that hold. We're gonna either be looking for the breakout or um, hopefully make a base and you know stabilize a little bit. QQQ. Last week it was pretty similar. Um, let's see, we were looking for it to hold up. I think we were looking for it to. Um, I'm trying to remember what we marked last week. Okay, so we needed this June low to hold. It did break. Um, and then we zoomed out, I remember. And we said if it didn't, that it would briefly touch 260, this old September support, it did indeed touch that level. And, sorry, I'm letting this load a little bit. Um, it touched it, uh, it went under it actually. So we opened under it after the CPI report and then reclaimed it. And then we rejected right back off the June low and just the general trend line area. So we're gonna wanna see the September 2020 support hold, um, maybe make it 260 base. If not, um, you know, it might head back to that, you know, 254 low. So we're going to want to see it hold up here. If not, could run back up to, see the brush. Um, we're going to see, see it low, uh, hold this. If not, um, you know, it could get ugly short term. But if it does indeed hold, see it run back up to the trend line. So no really clear setups at the moment on the indexes, um, as you can see except for maybe SPY, um, you had a clear third trend line rejection. So, you know, you could have maybe taken puts there. But right now, I think everybody's just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So next, we'll get into IWM. This one was actually way cleaner than the others. So we had this demand right here, pretty clear. Um, we said it would probably come down a little bit lower to test the demand. It did exactly that held the June low and demand, and we said if it held, it'd run back up to the trend line. And you see that clearly right here, came back up for a third test, rejects, right back to demand. So, um, did exactly what we thought it would. And um, you can just see how why I'm saying if it holds, it run back up to the trend line for the others, because IWM did exactly that. So, once you see these patterns play out for a long time, you just kind of know that, you know, if something holds, it can go here. If it doesn't, it's not. So that's really all trading is about, just making sure levels hold, um, making sure they break out or break down. So, and managing risk, of course. Next, we'll go into the VIX. Um, this was another thing that, you know, pretty much went exactly how we thought it would. Um, I said, if you're a bull, you're gonna wanna see it stabilize, of course. Uh, you know, it, it really didn't. Uh, I think it closed here that Friday. I said for bears, they have a good case of running back up to 35 and rejecting there. A um, little short, maybe about 34.56, and um, rejected right off of it. So hopefully it can stabilize here again. If not, you know, we might just keep seeing a repeat back up to this level. So um, if it does want to stabilize, y'all already know I like to use the 2022 average close. Um, and also use trend lines, so it'd probably, you know, if it wanted to stay less, probably come back down there, try to hold it there, etc. But um, we'll go into the data a little bit. So after Friday's close on 10.14, we have a 32.01 close that brought it up to 26.11. So you can see it down there. Um, I even implemented a 50 period uh, moving average and you can see we're still trending over it same on the trading view chart and um, if you want to see a mean regression back to the average we're just going to want to see a stable 035 you know if it does break out you can see VIX 40s um, so the same thing as last week we want to see it stabilize for bulls um, if it does want to indeed hold up here you know I would just keep going off the same 35 level and um Keep watching the average close. It you know every day you know it closes higher. Obviously, it's going to bring it up. So, um, makes the mean regression you know price target a little bit closer the longer it stays up here. But um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm hoping that these setups are just as good as the last week. Um, I know it's another mixed bag, but as long as you trade smart and 
you know, you're making sure that trend lines are holding or um, following your stop losses, etc., and paying attention to the dollar, the VIX, bonds, all that, you, you should have a pretty good week. Um, I think last week we had some really good stuff. Um, like plug, we had a gap fill trade. It totally filled the gap, hit the trend line, price target, DVN, um, puts, you know, it rejected off supply, came back down to the, the level that we looked at. So um, if you want, go back and review that and um, compare what we were looking at Friday um, to when it's done at the end of the week. You'll see that, you know, a lot of our speculations on what price would do, it, it did come true. So um, you might get something out of that and it could help you make, you know, your own watch list or um, help you with your own analysis. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, I'll see y'all Monday. If y'all need anything, you know, just message me on discord, Alexander underscore 96. And, um, I'm always active. So I trade full time. So I dedicate all my time to this and I hope y'all have a great week and I'll see y'all Monday. Thank you.